Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with some thoughts on the upcoming light welterweight showdown between Zab Judah and Kaiser Mabuza. Now, before I go further, let me just say that the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's get real on Zab Judah. As I like to say, the people online, all of us on YouTube talking about fights, and there's a great community online, we aren't trying to sign Zab Judah to a contract. I'm not trying to sell Zab Judah to the public. I'm not trying to ingratiate myself with Zab Judah or any other fighter so that I can get more interview time. Zab Judah, simply put, with his talent, should have done far more than he's done in the sport of boxing. We talk about fighters who take uh, mental vacations right now. That seems to be a big concern with fighters like Andre Berto, Victor Ortiz. We say, is he maximizing his talent? Is he focused in the ring? Is he best utilizing his skills? Well, we know the answers with Zab Judah, and unfortunately for Zab, the answers to those questions are no. Zab knows the answers are no. That's why we keep hearing about the new Zab Judah. That's why we're hearing now that he's with a new management group and that he has rejuvenated his career. You know, with the great fighters, you know, the Floyd Mayweathers of the world, you never hear that the guy has to regain focus because, of course, the boxer himself has an interest in maximizing his talents, right? You know, um, I can point out strengths and weaknesses in a lot of fighters. Uh, the one thing I will say is when I'm talking about guys who I know are warriors, for example, Miguel Cotto, the one thing I have absolutely no doubt about is that when Miguel Cotto enters a fight, he is completely focused because he's a warrior and he wants to give himself the best chance to win. I cannot say that about Zab Judah. Judah's now on the other side of 30. And um, like Shane Mosley, I believe that Judah, who has some boxing skills, is primarily a slugger masquerading as a boxer. His um, foot movement, and I'm talking about sustained foot movement over 12 rounds, his mobility has greatly decreased. While in the early rounds, he still has punching power. Punching power is the last to go. And while he still has blistering hand speed, he does have among the fastest hands in the sport. I just don't believe that Zab Judah has the stamina or the ability to follow you around the ring for 12 rounds. In other words, ambush fighters know they can ambush Zab Judah because after the ambush, Zab Judah cannot follow them. Right? I would take... Manny Pacquiao over Zab Judah simply because Manny Pacquiao is blessed with stamina. Zab Judah is not. I believe Manny Pacquiao by the fourth or fifth round of that fight would realize that after he attacks Zab and backs back out to take a breather, that Zab won't be able to follow him to force him to continue to fight. I believe that's what underdog Kaiser Mabuza is going to discover. Right? Mabuza has handled very dangerous southpaws in the past. In fact, in his last fight against Kendall Holt. Let's remember, Kendall Holt throws one of the best left hooks in boxing. This is the left hook that literally lifted Timothy Bradley off his feet in the first round of their fight. And Kendall Holt got completely disengaged, never landed that left hook against Kaiser Mabuza. He literally got, you know, um, taken apart. Did not answer the bell in that fight for, I believe it was the sixth round. In other words, he was completely dismantled. 
right? I believe that's what Mabuza is going to do to Zab Judah. Every fight Judah is in, he has a chance at a knockout. I believe for Judah to get a knockout, it has to come in the first four, five, possibly six rounds. But after that, I'm expecting him to get completely outworked. I'm expecting him to, uh, quite frankly, start to look amateurish. I'm expecting him to fade as badly in this fight as he did in his last fight against Lucas Mathis. And keep in mind, too, with Judah, these second half of the fight fades are becoming a pattern. In fact, they're already a pattern. He was up big, in my opinion, against Floyd Mayweather, gave away that fight, then mentally cracked late in that fight, uh, getting himself suspended after the fight for unprofessional misconduct late in that fight. I thought he was schooling Miguel Cotto. I thought Cotto was so desperate in that fight that Cotto deliberately, in my opinion, started to throw low blows, count the low blows in that fight. But what cannot be denied is that Zab Judah's stamina in that Cotto fight completely went out the window to the point where Judah ended up getting stopped in that fight. Against Joshua Clotty, at the beginning of that fight, I thought that um, if you were to give Floyd Mayweather a head start on hand speed and foot speed at the beginning of a fight, I think Floyd knows how to take it from there and win the fight. Right? Manny Pacquiao fought Joshua Clotty. He had a head start in terms of hand speed and foot speed. I have a video up where, where I predicted Pacquiao would win that fight. Pacquiao went on and won that fight comfortably. Zad Judah fights Joshua Clotty. He has a head start on hand speed, foot speed, everything physical. He has an advantage, even punching power over Joshua Clotty. You know the rest. After Zad Judah looked good early, he started to get frustrated around, uh, you know, around round four. Then I thought he started to look for a way out in a fight that could have been career-defining. That fight ultimately ended on a cut, uh, but let's just say that when I saw Miguel Cotto get cut against Joshua Clotty, the referee asked Miguel Cotto if he wanted to continue that fight, and Cotto, of course, said yes, because Miguel Cotto is a warrior. Compare and contrast, compare and contrast that with the end of the Clotty versus Zab Judah fight. So here... I actually like the underdog. I like Kaiser Mabuza to beat Zab Judah. Mabuza, simply put, is the better athlete. Now be careful. If you look in Mabuza's past, you're going to find out that when he was in his prime, he then mysteriously disappeared for calendar year 2006. When he came back, he fought two decent fighters, not exactly uh, Kodo. Pacquiao or Mayweather or Donito Denaire level, but he fought two decent fighters. He lost both of those matches, and if you look at the scoring of those matches, he lost them by several rounds. Mabuza then turned his career around and seems to be on a rampage now. But I do wonder what the story was then. So understand, when you're taking Mabuza... You know, this isn't like you're taking young Nanito Denier. You're actually taking an older fighter who's had twists and turns in the road. M uh, Mabuza's even been knocked out multiple times in the past, but he has not been knocked out for several years. And the fighter I'm seeing now on tape is qualitatively better than he was earlier in his career. The way I play this is I like Mabuza to win this fight straddled against Zab Judah by early KO, right? I believe that if Zab Judah does not sweep the first four rounds of this fight, I believe he's going to lose the match. Let me also say something else. I know people are going to say, hey, isn't this fight in Newark, New Jersey? Isn't this fight in Zab Judah's backyard? Let me just say this. You know, New York City, people need to understand that um, 
Folks ride the trains in New York City. Folks take cabs in New York City, right? People in Brooklyn will go to Queens. Um, you know, they'll go to Manhattan. They'll go to the Bronx. Uh, people in Queens will go to the Bronx. They'll go to Manhattan. They'll go to Brooklyn. Um, if you ask them to get outside the mass transit uh, system and travel to New Jersey, I believe that's asking too much. I know physically it's close to New York. Mentally, it's very far away from Zab Judas, Brooklyn. Let me also say, too, that New York City is an international city. Joshua Clotty, for example, uh, from Ghana, lives in New York City, right? Um, you know, uh, Miguel Cotto, uh, very popular. He fights often in Madison Square Garden. New York has a thriving Puerto Rican community, right? The point I'm making is this. Foreign fighters who come to the Big Apple understand that the um, hometown advantage held by the local fighter isn't as big as it's coming across to the public because New York has vibrant ethnic communities. So don't be surprised if the African community is out in force in Newark to cheer on Kaiser Mabuza because they understand that even though he's a plus 250, plus 275 underdog, they know their guy has a legitimate chance on Zab Judah. This is a perfect storm. So I do not expect Kaiser Mabuza to be unrepresented in the arena in Newark. And while there will probably be more Zab Judah fans in the crowd, I think just based on fight styles, once it becomes apparent that Mabuza is the kind of guy who's out there being a warrior, hustling, I think he's going to swing many of the fans in his direction. I just cannot see the judges taking away a hard-earned decision from him. So, um, and also, this is a guy who went to the Ukraine and beat Fedchenko. This is a guy who's mentally tough, who's prepared, who has fought on the road. I like Mabuza in the upset in this fight, straddled against Zab Judah by KO. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at predictboxing.blogspot.com and, of course, at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.